seven star step. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, and step seven. When you're doing seven star step, when your leg move back, you must lift with the groin muscle. When you're taking the step out, you must use the supporting knee to bend to extend the other leg. When you're swinging the leg back, you must use the knee as the center and then swing it back. Hand movements must follow the principle of left-right balancing with front-back energy and same side balancing with spinning energy. And it also follows the principle of Zhan Nian Lian Sui. Zhan means very touching. Nian means sticking. Lian means combining. Sui means following. Three star steps. Step one, step two, and step three. In three star steps, you must be making the step continuously floating, and also your hand movement should be continuously floating without stopping. Three star step is the most widely used steps uh, in the internal martial art way of fighting. The three star step also have a wide variety of movement. It could cross the opponent's uh, energy flow and traveling to the opposite side or it can parallel the opponent's energy and still travel the same side. So one must learn the three star steps flexibly. It also follows the principle of Hua, Na, Na. Hua means neutralizations, Na means stabilizations, Da means strike or attack. Five star steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five. Five star step in essence is used by internal martial art to cross the opponent's energy and travel towards the opposite side and to the back of the opponent. combination use of three, five, seven star steps has a wide variety of usage. Here is just a few uh, demonstrations of how you can uh, step out and step in, step across, and step to the side. In all internal martial art fighting, the footwork should be following this principle of three, five, seven star steps.
must slide step. Must slide step, you must extend the front leg at least three times towards the front, just like you're sliding on mud. Your back knee must be kneeling. And this work is practiced by the internal martial art of Bagua. And Bagua is used this step to practice their stability on the ground and also building the strength of the back leg. By boom. This footwork is to practice by putting your foot swinging outward and the main purpose is to practice your stability and balance of your body. And to achieve the best of step, you can put a piece of paper between your thigh of the two legs and as you step the paper should not be far out on the ground and this way then you are keeping your upper thigh together at all times. Kaupu is the same light bipu except that your foot is hooking inward and the practice is to practice your stability of the upper body on spinning and the requirement is the same as bipu so that you can practice by putting a piece of paper between your two thigh and walk without dropping the paper. Push step. This footwork is to practice how you push your body balance to the front without falling. And this step is very much like you are skating. As you are skating, you're pushing the back leg so that it slides forward. circle, step out with the water palm, turn, flow gently around the circle, relaxing, just almost meditating as you're walking. Turn, flow down, flow back up. We call this a single palm change with each of the postures when we make it like this. Turn inside, turn outside, inside and outside. Now you'll notice just then I wanted to illustrate, this was incorrect, turning here, dropping the arm down, the body not moving. If you're going to turn to the outside as you move, 
or to the inside as you move. As you're walking, make sure when you make the turn that the hands are all part of the action and everything moves together. Don't move and then move your hands like that. Always move everything as a part of the whole. Each thing, as you turn, as you move. This is the Taiji posture walking. Water palm. Holding the palm in a position and walking sets a neurological response into the body that allows you to move from any position into that posture very rapidly, almost always at the same space and same place. That can make you a lot faster in your movements. Now, Terry, let's look at this for just a second. These are little games to get the idea here. He stand here. I'm walking this posture. He reaches out with his hand. I just lift up. As I lift up, you see I'm stepping in. I've done my boss step already. And so now I'm pushing off. So that just throws him up and out like so. Terry? Using it in the Tai Chi position, I'm right here. I come down with this one, sucking him in, and that throws this one up to strike him as I move out. So I get the idea of pushing and lifting, pulling down and lifting as I step. If I just strike him with that and I'm moving, then I come here, push him down, strike with this one. Now if I change it again, I strike him again as I walk around him. I can keep on doing this. Most of the time I won't be walking around the man I'm fighting. I'll be moving right Continue straight with through. medium weapons. We'll Terry, will you bring in a baseball bat here? Now this bat, you can swing to strike, usually just like a slugger would strike. You try to knock the guy's head off, all right? So let's do that and let's neutralize and control, okay? Step back over here. We'll use the water palm in the movement, okay? Good, okay. Let's take a look at what happened here, all right? As you moved in, I came underneath the water palm coming up. Again, my hand striking you here with the wind palm coming up here. This takes you over, carries you down, and I'm sliding down, as we talked about earlier, taking hold of the weapon, and that starts the lock, see, which takes you into the throw, okay? That's how that functions. So do it about a moderate speed so we can just see the flow of it as it comes through, okay? Here, here, and here. Now, Terry, if you were swinging with a backhand swing, let's say you took the bat and you came around this way, see, I can, again, get off the line. Now, I want to make sure that I'm in the place here where I'm safe, but as you begin to move, okay, I'm going to close the distance so that I'm past the impact point, see. Now, I'm going to use what we used on the previous tape, which is the lock, the chin na method. The chin na method here of crack the willow branch, you see? So when you come in there, I'll use that, all right? So you get back and you take a swing and try to knock my head off with the bat, okay? There you go, see? Now I want to point something out here that I think is very important. Terry's wearing short sleeve shirts. He's under the hot studio lights. He's very sweaty. I can't hold on to him. His arms are slick, so I have to use the turning and the circling and the compressing of the body as we talked about in the previous tapes. Because you can't judge how a person's going to be dressed or how they're going to set up for you. His shirt is too flimsy to hang on to. It would tear off if I tried to do this. So when he comes around here, what I have to do is control the whole body with my energy, not by a grab, a grip or a grasp or something like this, but by the energy, you see? I have to control the whole thing so that if I tried to do this technique, and you came in here and I tried to catch you, my hands would just slip off, see, and I'd get hit. But by rolling the whole body and controlling your spine, I'm not really controlling your arm as much as I am your spine. I'm locking the arm in the crack willow branch, but that's going into your shoulder, which is going into your spine. So hit me here again, like this, and we'll see what I mean. Good. This next palm is okay. very nice in terms of flow. It's called the water palm. In the water palm, the I Ching says that the energy flows up and down just like a wave. The wave is flowing from one direction and then the next, sometimes like an undertow, sometimes like a very large wave lifting up and overpowering whatever it touches. In the water palm exercise, we hold the hand in this direction as it comes all the way up and circles out like so. Be sure not to bring the elbow much higher than the shoulder in this position. Normally we'd push forward a little bit more and leave it just about shoulder height. 
If you do it like this, you'll want to do it as a stretch, but you won't want to use that as an application. In the water palm form, we'll drop the hand down, flowing. Now look at this from the side. In the fire palm, it drops. In this one, it flows. So as it flows up and down, we use it in the exercise like this. Dropping the weight and flowing, lifting, and flowing. Just get the connection between the legs, the hips, the waist, and the arms, all as one thing. Using it here, down and up, down and up, down and up. This is shifting the balance, see, coming into a tiger stance, and up, down and up. I want to mention that you can practice all of these palms in the various stances. I'm simply illustrating them here in these so we can see how to get the connection down and up, down and up. It's important that we get this connection. If we don't get the connection, then just simply walking in a circle as most Bagua people will do, or walking in a linear fashion or fighting, if there's no connection between the body and the palm, then there's no power. If there's no power, the art is not effective for fighting. Let's look at the application of this. Terry, will you help me please? Okay, if we put Terry here, again we'll put him in this framing position like this. The water palm is up and out. Now if I simply try to lift him by doing this and pressing up with my shoulders, <coughs> it's very hard, golly. It's hard to do because this guy's heavy, okay? So if I use the legs coming up like this, then I roll the arms underneath him. You see how it starts to lift them? And the legs are doing this lift. So in practicing, I just lift coming up. That lift gives me a nice upward rolling action. Now, should his hands be a little more loose, then it'll lift him way up. You can come down and do all sorts of controlling applications to him. Here again, let me remind you, we're only showing this as a practice, not as a martial technique. Obviously, you're not going to do this when somebody attacks you all the time. Let's look at the Tai Chi application, one up, one down. Again, this arm is used flowing downward like water towards the side of the waist or the crease in the hip, which is called the gua, flowing down here. The other hand will be used on the other side. I'll turn around so you can see that. This one's coming down. This one will be flowing up this way. Now the energy will be curving from my leg upward into his body like so. So when we do this, and right about here, like this, okay, this one comes down, this one will then flow up, like so. And this will be the end of the posture, somewhere in here. Okay? That's the way the water palm will work. Play with a friend and do this. I want to say this again, and I'll say it throughout the tape. Don't force it. Don't use hard energy. Just relax and feel. Feel where his energy begins to break, and then add your energy. Don't try to fight against his force. Never, never do that.
essentially it's the five steps. The five steps make up the remaining 13. With the first eight, with the eight ways, and this five is the five steps, totally 13. The eight ways teach you each technique that's important to Tai Chi, but that's static. The five steps of advanced retreat left, right, and center teach you to make Tai Chi more fluid, more active. We'll start with a training method to allow you to practice the five steps and then we'll show some application of the five steps. The first one would be advance. Forwards, foot forwards, then retreat, back, back, step left to gaze right, step back, step right to tap left. And last of all, central equilibrium, or perfect balance. This is where you need to give no ground. If you stand your ground, you'll be still and you're stable. The importance of the five steps is allow you to, to allow you to make the necessary ground to make contact, whether it to be to step up to your opponent to attack, or to make space to give each other some chance the opportunity to then attack. But the, so the first one will be advance. The Satan classic to advance, advance at all times. If you meet no obstacle, keep advancing. Gay will attack and I will advance. When I advance, I create an opening. Now retreat. If I can't advance when the force is too great, I need to retreat to make space. So if Gay can slide forwards, as he attacks, I'll retreat to make space and then attack. Retreat to attack. From there, we have step left to look right. Again, if I can't meet the force head on, I need to make some space. So, step left to attack right. From there, also the opposite, step right to attack left. Step right. Left. And finally, to stand your ground. This posture takes more skill and more determination because you need to stand your ground. You need to be still and stable, not to overextend, not to take any chances. We'll show you those techniques from the other side. So as he bounces, no bounce, give him no chance. So I bounce and keep advancing. As he advances on retreat, making an opening, and then again attack. Step left. Step right. And last of all, stand and be stable. Standing is no proof of skill. Moving is no sign of weakness. If he attacks and his force is too great, there's no need for me to show off. I should move. All well, this could happen. And I'm losing. So if he attacks, I need to make some space. Okay. Make space when you need to. In this lesson, we'll talk about the single palm change in the Wang Shu Jin system. Um, just because it's a very simple change, and we can see a lot of the uh, major body principles and forces at play that we have talked about already. The single palm change, or the Dan Huan Zhang in Chinese, is a very simple form. It's always found in any Bagua system. It's usually the very first form. Single palm change in a nutshell is changing direction and then applying a different side of the body to the opponent. So if we're walking the circle, aim at the opponent this way, the single palm change would allow us to change and be on this side. It could be a very quick movement too. You know, if the 
opponent suddenly changes side, getting ready for a kick or whatever, you see it, you don't like the way he's moving, you get over here, back over here, that's what the single palm change essentially does. Okay? Um, we'll look at several factors here. The stepping, we've learned this before, the T-step, stepping up, turning in, okay, stepping out into what's called the crouching tiger, very strong, sort of 60, 40 stance as far as the weight distribution, and then coming, leaning in forward, finishing, and Wallen Shujin's system uses sort of a high lift or kick at the end of their form, which we'll incorporate also. So, a single palm change. As you're walking the circle, we'll do one quick movement here. We come around to make the change. We turn inward. As we do, the hands begin to spin inside. Remember our centripetal force movement, the shang xin li. Okay. That's turning inside this way. So, we have an opponent over here. We've turned inside to react to some incoming force. And then we spin away from there in what's called the crouching tiger. Okay? So once again, coming from here, turning inside and out to crouching tiger. Very strong stance here. This is also entering on the opponent. So the crouching tiger will push out and away, come under from this side and then come around in a rise, drill, fall, overturn movement, raising the leg, finally, and then ending up at the end of the form. Okay? Without the leg raise, it's essentially the same. Rise, drill, step, finish. Like that. Okay? It's a very smooth movement, very simple. From our movement here, we turn inside, crouching tiger, push away, come under, come around, finish. Okay. Do the same from this side. For walking this side, we turn in, out to crouching tiger, pushing away, coming under, up, around, and finishing. It should be very smooth. You're here and back out. Okay? So we ask an opponent to step in, Dylan. Uh, look a little bit about how this all works with a body to work with. And he's standing in just a posture, hands up. Um, as we're coming in, what we want to do is to change our attitude away from him to get to another side. So if I don't like the way he's opening here, I see his back foot can come in, the back hand, whatever, I may want to change be more over here. Okay, so single palm change would allow me to do that, to move over here. Could be a very quick movement. He may punch, I'm gonna be on this side. A little slower at that, he may punch, centripetal movement, inside, I step, coming from behind, and just, Come in this way. If you were to step out to this corner, okay, same thing. Centripetal movement inside. I step through back over here. Okay, come in with the other hand. Here we go. Centripetal movement. I step inside and I find a good position behind him here. I can break his root here and also control him from this area here. So, same punch, a little faster. I want to get him offline. Faster yet. Okay. So he's going to find himself with me gone where he thought my target was. Okay. That's one of the movements there, the single palm change. Another is, you see in the crouching tiger, this movement here, where the hand is balancing the rear when it's pushing out this way. Uh, we could even work off a self defense move here, which is grab my hand. I can step in with the rise drill, overturn fall. Step in behind with my, with my hooking step here, bring him down here. And move off side a little bit, you can see how I've got him on this side. Okay? If you bring with the other hand here, same here, this hand here, here, 
coming down, there's my crouching tiger. As you step away, okay, there's the form. Just right out of the single palm change. Right? Another thing we can do with this is just try to get offline and behind. So as he comes in with a punch, I just want to be away. He's a big, strong guy. Okay? So once again, slower now. I'm trying to move off line, get around, okay, control from the rear, like that. Or the other hand coming in, I may just want to get out of there and out the door. So the single palm change, as we're walking around each other here, you know, he takes a punch, but I'm going to want to move away as fast as possible. Okay? Walking around, he grabs my arm. Same thing. I want to move in, down, and using the T step, single palm change, I can do that. Okay? So once again, I'm stepping in, accepting the incoming force, redirecting it, going around under and finishing. The finishing movement, um, as he throws, come in here, he come in here like this, finish here. And that's this uh, inward, inward movement like this, not like that. Okay. Thank you. So single palm change, some very essential skills. T-step, okay? The centripetal force, centrifugal, again here, and again here. Uh, we're seeing moving off the line, taking a new tack on the opponent. Uh, a lot of different forces and principles of the body are being applied in here. Thank you very much. In this lesson, we'll look at the second palm change in Wang Shujin's Bagua form called the Bagua Lian Huan Chang, which means the Bagua connected palms. The second change is called the Shuang Huan Chang, meaning the double palm change. It's very similar to the first palm change that we just looked at, the Dan Huan Chang, or the single palm change, except in the middle of this form, we're going to do a little 360 uh, and do a low movement and then come out of it again. So in a single palm change, remember, we moved in to Crouching Tiger, pressed outward, came up, and finished the form. This form, we just add something in the middle of that. So having moved in to Crouching Tiger, we now open, step out, drill, which looks a bit like this. Drill in this way. From there, we're going to turn and drop very low and come out to the same ending we had in the first form. Okay, so it'd be sort of a form within a form. It's done like this. From the side, we turn inward with a T step. We have our centripetal movement, our inward movement here. We go out to a crouching tiger. It's so entering low here, very strong form. Notice the knee over the toes in both directions here. If you have your knee coming in more here, you should turn your toe in further. From there, we'll sweep outward, it's called opening the door, outward in a way, step up, and drill. So coming from the rear, crouching tiger, step out, drill. Foot down on the ball of the foot, this drilling hand parries downward, drills inward, like that. From that move, let's see from this side, we'll turn like this, drop to the rear, very low, come out, upward, 
and rise, drill, fall, overturn, and lift the leg and step out like that. And that's the double palm change. Um, some things to remember, we have these movements that come and go, come and go like yin yang, yin yang, where we have the centripetal movement, centrifugal, okay, outward, centripetal, and then turning, centripetal, centrifugal, I mean down here, or down this way, centripetal, opening, centrifugal, okay. So as we call a partner in here, one of the things we'll do here is to look how we can turn and add pressure. For example, if he comes in with a punch, like here, pressure upward with this drilling movement, like that. Or the drilling movement can even just throw him completely offline using this hooking step here to push him away. Okay? That's the drilling coming in this side can also come in and come this way, pressing across like that also. So we have this drilling, hand comes in, offline here. This can even slip in at this point and bring it around here and do this takedown, okay? Like that, okay? So once again, he comes in, I'm here, I can get inside and work with him over here, okay? Um, the other side may come in, I'm here, I can work with him inside here, in the same way, okay? So that's this movement up into the rear, comes in again, and also hook this way, bring him down, in that fashion. This hand comes in, I come in here, hitting up to the chin, and I can also move an arm bar from here, and then bringing him down at the end of the form, here, a little rise and trip off to the side, okay? So on the downward movement, he can come in, can take him in and downward and away, okay? Can also take him in here, moving downward and away here, okay? So I can be close to him on this side. And that's the downward movement going here, back out. Other way is a kick again. Okay, I get him off me in that way. That's coming in from here. Uh, another way is he comes in from the rear. I come in this side, bring him back down here once again. He can grab the hand, he can slip inside, come in here, bring him down here. Also, lots of different movements in this form that you can use for many, many self-defense situations. Thank you. And that is the double palm change from the Wang Shujin Lian Huan Zhang form. Thank you.